world of Fortnite has given us some random events, to say the least. From an ice king covering the island in zombie snow, and who could forget, a couple of pretty epic concerts. Occasionally, the seasons we play are filled with core story, which add to Fortnite lore. Season 6 of Chapter 2 is one of those seasons, with narrative hidden everywhere. The seven are back in our lives, Fortnite Save the World is getting a little more attention too, and the return of Kevin and his minions look imminent. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, let's go through some secret lore in Season 6 and try to predict the future. Oh and do me a favour, use code Adamaru, pretty please. Thanks. So that there spire with Dwayne inside, good old foundation. When the season began, no one was able to identify the material this structure was comprised of. Well, thanks to a Fortnite blog post, we have the details for certain. The spires are made from chromium, thanks to the inspired styles for Raz, Tirana and the Spire Assassins, unlocked at levels 110 to 150. I asked Google about chromium, and I can almost confidently tell you, chromium is a chemical element on the periodic table. Look, it's there. It's officially the fifth hardest metal on Earth. Well, this isn't science class. It's the second style we need to look at, the runic style choice. If you paid attention to Raz and Tirana this season, you'll notice their body markings, tattoo-like appendages all over them. As you know, this is the runic language we all associate with Kevin the Cube. But surprisingly, that's not the only thing I want to focus on. Instead, it's the tier 46 item in the battle pass, the Endless Scroll. Notice anything here worth our time? Lots of Kevin's glyphs are here, but look at this. Ring any bells? This looks to be the horns of the Storm King. We saw him in Battle Royale back in 2019, when the central island suddenly became his domain. It wasn't until later that year we finally realised the zero point was here all along, right underneath this exact spot on the island, making many of us reevaluate the Storm King and his role in Battle Royale, and if he was canon to the storyline. Now let's go back to the back bling. The Endless Scroll is reactive. First of all, it's damn cool to look at, but this has more to offer. If you know me, you know I have a bit of a thing for Japanese culture and mythology, and if I had to guess, I would say this is a summoning scroll, or maybe a Chinese admonition scroll. The thing to note here is this parchment is different and requires lives to be offered to empower it. Here's how it breaks down. As standard, the Endless Scroll is a black script on white parchment. After a single elimination offering, an energy pulse activates the runes and turns them purple. At three offerings, the full script is activated with this blue sheen and glow. And finally, after six eliminations, a pink energy erupts and the scroll is now fully powered. Putting all this evidence together, we can surmise that Raz is calling for the Storm King to return to the island and using that force to increase his own mastery of the glyphs. Take a look at the final form of Raz, which we will receive once we complete the Spire Quests. The same chromatic power flows through him, which he's taken from the Spire. We are all expecting the return of Kevin the Cube, but could it be Kevin's demon of death who will surprise us all? The back bling requires six elims to power, and I think the six is important here. Ever heard of the number 666? Three sixes in a row is said to be the number of the beast, a being so evil it wants to obliterate us all. And I'm pretty sure Raz is calling him back to the island. On the plus side, it's another chance to fight the Storm King and claim the glider you may have missed a few years ago. But it also could be the catalyst for the return of the cube. This theory goes a little deeper. Any Save the World players in the house? Have you noticed how Save the World lore is slowly coming back into the game this season? Kyle has been here for a few seasons now, even though he isn't available in the store yet. And when he is, please use code Adamaru. Shameless plug, thank you very much. But should you play as Penny and talk to Kyle, there is this dialogue option to be read. Kyle remarks, I was just saying we need more constructors around here. To a BR player, this means absolutely nothing, but to someone who plays Save the World, you'll know that both these thick characters are constructor classes, and they have the ability to reinforce structures. To add to this, Penny can also speak to Power Chord, that's where I get my guitar by the way. In Save the World, these two are sisters from England, Penny and Leanne, complete with overacting VO. Leanne, come on, I'm not going to be cross with you. It's Power Chord! 
They are great. Right now in Battle Royale, while playing as Penny, we can interact with Power Cot. Leanne says, you made it too, sis. Absolutely wicked. In the past, we haven't had confirmation the law carries between Save the World and Battle Royale, but now we do. And that leads me onto the story of the original Storm King and the first time we met Kevin the Cube. If you don't want to know anything that happened in the Save the World game mode, switch off now. It's going to get a little spoilery. In 2018, the timeline of Save the World was completely broken. Our tiny robot helper Ray vanished into thin air and her existence was alleged to be in another timeline. This is a good time to remind you that leakers have told us that a Ray skin is coming to Battle Royale. Ray in Save the World is actually a floating bot named Seventeen, who was made in the image of a brilliant scientist called Desiree. Without warning, the Night Army awoke, a corruption that began to spread across the land. Long story short, our heroes attempted to send a probe through the portals which the corruption left behind in order to close the door from the other side. During this mission, we saw Penny and Power Cord reunite and spoke to Dr. Vinderman, you know, the dude who gives us all the V-Bucks. It was touching. Finally, we battled the Storm King, and after a grueling fight, we saw that Kevin the Cube was the power behind the Storm King. He slowly dissolved away as we came back home. But there was a problem. Someone needed to stay behind to set off the bomb to close the portals. And that person was Desiree. Afterwards, we found this was a failure and the corruption continued to be seen. The mission ended with a final message from the V-Bucks dude, Dr. Vinderman, saying, Commander, Commander, there is a solution. It is written on the wall. Since that day, we believe the glyphs are what we need to understand in Save the World. And right now, it looks like Kevin is also the key in Battle Royale. If these two stories are interconnected with time travel and portals, then Razzie's research and commitment to the Purple Runes is taking us towards an event. The corruption from the Spires is spreading and the locals are becoming restless. Barriers are the precursors of war and the Primal Age isn't holding any punches. By now, I'm sure you've noticed the formation of the Spires and how it almost perfectly creates a cube-like shape. The last time we saw this happen was when Kevin the Cube rolled in Chapter 1, the rune spots left behind once again creating a cube image. He then visited these again as a floating rock house. Happy days. We already know Kevin's energy is here in Chapter 2 through the appearance of the Storm King in 2019, and thanks to Kevolution, the steamy stacks this season is pluming more smoke than ever before but the purple water remains dormant. It may only be a suspicion right now, but I believe Raz will venture away from the primal areas and find the remains of Kevin the Cube here. A fully glyph-mastered Raz with the power of the beast, 666. He'd have everything he needs to summon the cube back. But what will that mean for the inhabitants of the island? I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time. All hail the return of Kevin. See ya!